Executive Director of United Policy Holders. She'll provide a resource that provides individuals and businesses free tools and resources to help solve insurance problems that can result from these kinds of occurrences. I don't know where the mic is. Uh, also presenting is Tony Slagle, the Residential Property Analyst. Government, he's also the Governmental Relations Specialist for the Office of Public Insurance Counsel, which is a state agency located in Austin. And they advocate for insurance consumers in the state. As I'm finishing up, I'm now live. Anyway, we have, we have two very uh, knowledgeable people here today with us uh, from the insurance, various aspects of the insurance enterprise to talk about consumer protection issues and tips. So I'll turn it over to y'all. Okay. All right. Thank you, Tom. Um, and to the, the folks who um, organized the expo today and, and um, are providing such excellent service um, to your community. Um, in the in the audience, we have uh, I know some representatives of the Long Term Recovery Committee, um, Pastor Smith in the middle there, um, and it's been very impressive to see um, the the resources that have been pulled together to support um, y'all in your recovery here um, in Bastrop. So thank you for having us here. Um, us is United Policyholders. And um, I had invited to be with me today a gentleman here, uh, Tony Slagle, from something called the Office of Public Insurance Council, which is a, a, an agency, a state agency here in Texas that helps insurance consumers. So um, I spoke with a number of you earlier today at our table. And so I'm going to give a very brief explanation of of what um, United Policyholders is and what we do. Um, and then I'm gonna, that's a, a screenshot of our website there, uphelp.org, U-P-H-E-L-P.org. I'm gonna give you a very brief explanation of what you can find on there. Um, and you know, I know if the hour is late and it's been a long day, I, I commend all of you for being here um, I think obviously you'd rather be um, probably a lot of other places, but uh, it's come to, to you that insurance turns out to be a lot more important than you had ever thought. Um, and unfortunately, you're here um, because you, you need to really make sure that <clears throat> your insurance matters are on track. And that's why we're here. So um, our organization is a charity. We're a 501c3, which just means we're a tax-exempt organization. We don't sell anything. We're not a referral agency. We uh, don't accept money from insurance companies. And uh, we are here to give you information. We're what I like to call sort of a self-help charity, meaning that you paid money for insurance, and now you need it and we want to see you get it. And we're not gonna tell you, you must do A, B, C. You must do this on your own. You cannot hire professional help, or you must hire professional help, or you must complain to the Department of Insurance, or you must hire a public adjuster. We're gonna, or you shouldn't, any of that, right? We have a lot of respect for everybody's individual situation, and our job is to tell you what is out there, what your rights are, and then help you to make the best decision for your individual situation, all right? So um, one of the things that we've done with our website is to create a library. Um, and while um, all of you, can I just have a show of hands? If you've had a partial loss, could you raise your hand? Partial, okay. And then I'm gonna assume the rest of you are total. Um, or you're helping a friend or a neighbor, or you're um, an expert in recovery. We've got some experts in the back of the room with, from San Diego County in recovery. Um, <clears throat> okay, so mostly total, everything's gone. Um, and Tony's gonna talk a little bit about some of the special rules here in Texas um, that will get you money on your dwelling fast if you haven't already gotten it. Um, you know, your homeowner's insurance policy, as you all know, is a contract. It's a legal contract. And the very first thing we would like everybody to, to do is 
to get a full copy, a full current copy of their policy. So here we are a couple months past. Can I have a show of hands if anybody has not been able to get a copy of their policy? One, two, two. okay, you just got it, three. So we actually fought to get a law passed in um, our home state of California that requires the insurer to give you a complete copy of your policy within 30 days. Why we had to do that, I don't know, but we've been at this now for 20 years and it always seems to be a problem, so we got the law fixed in, in that state and now we're actually campaigning to get a similar law passed in Colorado, but regardless. So you have your policy, you now know that there are basically the four main categories that of money, and then there's a lot of other stuff, right? Um, and for most of you, you're focusing on, you get your, your dwelling coverage, right? And you're trying to figure out how much you actually have, which is not always as easy as you think it would be, because these days, you've got the one number um, on that first page, your declarations page, but it's, it's actually usually you have more than that, because most people today, have a replacement cost policy that gives them some extra coverage. And very often, and then you may already be here um, at the point of, of understanding that a lot of your policies have a list with codes and they have what are called endorsements or riders, they're add-ons, and a lot of those require you to do some math to figure out how much total coverage you have on your home, okay? And once you get to that, then you either are looking for that amount from your insurance company or you're trying to understand why the heck it's not enough. And that's one category. And I want to tell you, we're not here today to get you through the entire insurance process um, in my 15 minutes that I'm going to talk here. Um, then we're going to open up and have Tony talk and then we're going to open up for questions. This is just the beginning of an educational program that United Policyholders is going to be offering. Um, we're going to do, we're hoping to do one workshop a month um, for the next year. We've got um, a flyer here. Um, Emily, my fabulous program coordinator, Emily Cabral is here. Um, she's going to give out um, a meeting flyer. If you already have one, you can pass on it. But we're going to do a meeting December 1st. And um, they'll at the county courthouse, it's free. And uh, our outreach coordinator, Karen Remus, will be speaking. And it's going to be another orientation. And every one of our workshops is an opportunity for you to come and bring questions and get answers. And we're not going to be doing this alone. The Long-Term Recovery Committee will be um, working with us and we'll be tapping into local experts. So for example, um, today, I heard a lot of people struggling with issues around their tree um, coverage. Do I get, if I have $500 per tree, but what about the cost of removing? And we were talking about, with a, a, I don't think this woman is here, um, that she's maxed out on her debris removal, but she's got a lot of trees still that have to be removed. Can she use her tree coverage, all those things? We're not gonna answer everything today, all right? So as we go, we're gonna, be, we're gonna be hitting on these. But as issues come up for you, we would ask you to communicate them to us so that we can tailor our educational programs to fit your needs. So we talk about the math on your coverage A, um, then we've got your contents, and then most people, are struggling with their inventory. They're either wondering if um, <clears throat> they're ever gonna be able to actually remember or list. Um, what I wanna tell you is, first of all, we do have a tool that can make that easier. It's a flash drive that we will mail to you um, on request, and Emily has a tool request form. And again, if you didn't pick that up at our table outside, we've got them here. And you can, you can fill that out, give us a current mailing address, and we'll get one of these in the mail. And it's, a, it's an incredibly lengthy spreadsheet, room by room, of every item that you could possibly have in a typical home. Salt and pepper shakers down to the nitty gritty of you know tea bags in the kitchen and 
everything like that. And while we never want to see you pad or exaggerate or claim things you didn't have, that is the fastest way to get into an adversarial relationship with your insurance company, we do want to help you remember because it's so hard, um, especially when you are traumatized by a loss. A lot of people actually I don't think want to remember because it's so painful to think about the things that you no longer have. Um, so we have this tool and we will be doing a workshop um, down the line. And, and this is a breathing room issue. I want everybody to remember. You do not have to do this right now, okay? You gotta be, you gotta take your time and know that no human being can go through what you've gone through and remember a lifetime worth of possessions in, a, in by this two months after the loss. It's not possible, right? Now, if you decide for your own peace of mind and your family and whatever, that you just, you don't care and you just want to settle <coughs> as much as you can and move on, that's all right. You know, that's okay. And you can actually even ask your insurance company and we have a sample letter on our site in the, in the library. You'll see, you see the tab up there, library. We have sample letters and we have a letter. You can customize it, you have to customize it to your facts, and you can say to the insurance company, I really cannot, I would like to not have to itemize everything that I lost. Now, understanding that people very often take a whole year to get their inventory complete because you just keep remembering things, and that's okay. But again, if you want to ask your insurance company to waive the itemization, you absolutely can. That doesn't mean they're gonna say yes, but there's no harm in asking, and we have a sample letter that you can use to make that request, right? And I encourage you to do it, because one of the things, another thing you'll find on our website are surveys, what we've done after wildfires. And if you go to the survey responses um, from uh, the last big one we did, San Diego, um, actually the Colorado fires, um, you can find those responses. But in San Diego, where folks have had a lot of experience with wildfire recovery, um, this, is, this was the second, the 2007 was the second huge firestorm that they had had in that decade. Um, we were able to get uh, a number of insurance companies to waive the itemization requirement. Uh, in fact, State Farm did it for quite a few people. So we have the evidence in the surveys at our website, and you can use that to support your request. But again, no guarantee, no promise. But you, no harm, no foul. You can't, doesn't hurt to try. Okay, so we got the content, so I'm telling the message there is take your time and relax as much as you can and know that you are so not alone um, in, in doing this and the community will offer services. I know the Long-Term Recovery Committee is gonna be offering services to help you with this. Um, three uh, will be your uh, additional living expense coverage. And a lot of you have questions about that. How long can I claim it? Generally speaking, it's going to be policy by policy. Um, there will often be both a time limit, sometimes 12 months, hopefully not, um, and a dollar limit. And generally, insurance companies will give you an advance early on, cash, to get you set up and then you have to submit receipts and they'll reimburse you as you go. Now, I wanna just talk for one minute um, about depreciation. That's one of the areas that gets people the most confused and frustrated. Um, and, and this is just the essence of it. Insurance companies know a lot of people, not disaster survivors, but there are a lot of people out there that think, well, I better I better uh, pad a little bit because the insurance company is going to knock me down. So they'll, in order to protect themselves against fraud, insurance companies do have a requirement that they will hold back a certain amount of a payment until you prove that you replace the thing. And that's the way they protect themselves against people defrauding them. That's just the way it's been for a long time. So, but the problem for, for all of us on the consumer side with depreciation is there aren't that many clear rules and there's no um, science to it. It's an art and each 
insurance company seems to have their own formula for how they depreciate um, both both the dwelling and um, content, and it's confusing and it's frustrating. Now, we have resources that we offer um, to you on our website. We have a publication called Depreciation Basics, and we give you a, a schedule that gives you some suggested, there are some items that shouldn't be depreciated at all. And again, the message there, depreciation is negotiable and you should be comfortable with requesting <clears throat> and demanding as politely as you can a, a fair depreciation. And then we have a tool that helps you keep all your receipts in one place. Well, it's you can, you can create the tool yourself or you can fill out a request form. Um, it's basically just an envelope, okay? So the idea is that a lot of people get overwhelmed. It's completely natural and normal to, to be disorganized and overwhelmed and scattered. So just keeping all your receipts in one place will make it possible for you to request the full replacement value of your stuff as you replace it so that you're not leaving money on the table that's yours, okay? Um, there's a lot of other details that I don't want to go into now, but the bottom line is